Yeah, so when I think about redistribution, um, once again, I, I personally would say that uh, COVID uh, has, has helped us to see the, the disparity between those who have and those who have not. Um, I, I think about a friend of mine who is a principal in North Carolina. And as everyone is scrambling to gather resources to find ways to teach kids online, um, he and I are communicating back and forth, just checking in on one another. Hey man, what's been going on with you as you're getting ready? He's asking what's going on with me. And I was sharing with him how we were slowly distributing our laptops to our students who are in need. Um, however, it's been a slow grind and some kids, you know, uh, two weeks in had still not had computers or anything to do their work on or to connect with us and for us to be able to check in and make sure they're okay. Well, I asked him what's going on his way and he says, man, uh, we have not done anything, literally had any communication with our students outside of a phone call or two for the last couple of weeks. And we will not be able to do anything education-wise for at least two to three more weeks. And I asked him what was, what was going on with that? Why was there such a, a, a gap in the, the learning opportunity? And he said, it's because they did not have the resources to start virtual or online, distance, remote, whatever you want to call it, learning um, immediately. So I said, well, what did you, what are you, what are you doing? What steps have you taken to try to get the resources? He said, man, we reached out to, um, the local district for, uh, computers. We reached out to, um, other schools to see if they had any spare computers they would give. And he said, they didn't give them to us. And I said, well, I, I just checked. I said, and I didn't mean that they didn't have them and couldn't, or they had them and wouldn't. And he said, no, they had them and just wouldn't. He said, I have a, he said he had a friend who was working downtown and he said, man, I've got to be honest with you. I can't release them to you, but we've got hundreds of computers sitting downtown in our district unused and unfortunately we can't give them to you and i asked him well, why do you think that is and he said it's, it's simple because my school is the alternative school it's the school where all the other schools sent their kids to me because it wasn't working for them where they were and their kids that those schools were finished with they didn't want to invest anything else in them they didn't want to provide anything else to them. They felt like they had nothing left to give. So now when we need something, we can't get it because they don't see those kids as being as important. Um, and that was, that was tough. It was tough for him. It was tough for those students. It was tough for me to hear because what ended up actually happening is those students spent a five-week gap, a five-week gap where they got no learning, no connection whatsoever. And then when they got the computers, they still faced challenges because they struggled to ensure that everyone had internet service at home. And the only deals they could get were from folks who wanted to offer them two, three month plans and then lock them into one to two years after that. These are people who can't afford, they couldn't do that. They simply wanted to make sure their children had the resources to learn. So when we think about redistribution, we're not talking about stealing from the rich to give to the less fortunate. What we're saying is if you have and you don't need Give to someone who does, because it's not about protecting your children's future. It's about ensuring that all children have a future. So we must consider that when we think about how we educate our children. Are we giving them all they need? Are we giving them the best chance to reach their God-given potential with all the resources they can have?